I think I could do it. I think I could do it. Just take a little bit of Ta-da! So what we got here is a Hangar 9 100 inch wingspan uh, Piper PA-18 Super Cub. Um, it was my buddy's airplane and he was flying it in a Cub Gaggle in Austin, I believe, or at Bomber Field. I can't remember which one. And he got into a mid-air collision with a Fokker biplane, the D7 from Hangar 9, actually. So this is the steps that I took and the process that I went through to rebuild the airplane. And yeah, I hope it's going to be educational. Uh, this was kind of the video that really started me in wanting to do video rebuilds. Um, and I learned a lot from this. And as you see here, um, this is where we got started. All right, what's up guys? Um, working on the Cub here. Uh, I was gonna do a video and got a little too creative and got ahead of myself after I started cutting pieces. Uh, but I got most of the Laundron spliced in, uh, quarter inch balsa, hard balsa. And I have my uh, balsa sides here. And um, how I'm keeping everything straight and true is I have two clamp or two uh, pieces of aluminum angle here and I use that to kind of keep everything nice and straight. I gotta put the other one back on. Um, and yeah, clamps are your friend when you're doing a re rebuild project. As you can see, got a few splices also going on there, up there towards the uh, towards the front right there. Doo -doo. Um, and I also have accidentally grabbed the wrong piece of material when I went to cut my 1 8 inch by a half inch wide strip for the lower launcher on here on the fuselage side and uh yeah measure twice cut once and confirm confirm that you actually have the right piece of material when you go to cut the very accurate measurement um most of my splices you all uh they're about eight to one to twelve to one ratio uh twelve to one is what all the old mechanics agree upon and the good old ac 4313-b to uh, repair full-scale airplanes. So it's always worked out for me doing splices like that at a very shallow angle. You don't want a sharp angle because then it's just gonna break off. Um, has no load carrying capability. And as you see here, I got you know, splice here, but then these splices go across like this and not you know, just butt glue or anything like that. That's a very weak glue joint. And also, you want to stagger your, your cuts. So, like, I have this one here at this angle. And then this one is actually following the line with the push rods. You can kind of see it real. You can see that lower one really good. Um, and you can see on the fuselage side, I'm going to do that um, at that angle. So, even your sheeting, you want to splice in and put, like, a little doubler piece behind there to double it up. But, uh, yeah, so... Next up is going to be figuring out my angle of my tail post, which I'm going to put my angle up here and clamp all this up and then figure out the uh, center so I don't have a banana fuselage other than it being yellow. And you can kind of see it's kind of got a little craziness going on here. But jig it all up straight, put, in a, put another uh, carpenter square out here to help frame up the fuselage side and keep everything straight and true. And uh, yeah, that's how we're gonna do it.
wanted to do a quick video here just to update a little bit of progress. Got that temporary clamped, the new spliced in piece of spruce. Got the uh, side piece added on. It's only attached on one side for the uh, lower quarter inch square so I can get it level. I've already got this piece trimmed and then I've decided, well, I gotta have something in here to reinforce this. And also I gotta put in for the uh, uh, push rods support. So I'll end up probably trimming that side off and then just building it up, adding it in. Um, currently working on cutting my tail post angle. Um, this is acting like my stand in rudder hinge line. And as you can see there it is. Yeah. Where I'm in question on. Uh, so how I'm doing this is got my little bubble level, and that's a little bit off center, a little bit of negative incidence on the stab. And if you put this, what would be on the bottom of the wing? You know, real scientific here. I'll, I'll actually do it better when I actually go to put put the wing on. But if you go with the bottom, it's pretty level. So I really kind of actually want this to be, instead of level, I want it to be more, you know, slightly nose up. It's probably about right there. So fight the sixteenths of an inch to give it a little bit. So that way, as cubs fly faster, they like to lift up. When it's on stab, push it down, counteract it. Uh, so that's where we're at. Like I said, it's without all the pieces of a crash, you do have to use some creative license. I found out this is a Hangar 9, the original Hangar 9 100 inch Super Cub. So there's uh, hardly any real side views to go off of that I could actually take any accurate measurements or anything in the ARF build manual. So there's that. Um, and I found that out based on the type of structure it's built and the two upper hatches and the cowling gave it away. Also, the way the gear attach have this cutout in it. So, and then it had these, came with these fake wooden strut covers or shot cord covers. So, and you can see it's an R with pre-cut stuff and whatnot. So, got a little clean to do, but here we go. We'll keep going. All right, we're back here working on the, the cub. And I've got the fuselage sitting in my cradle, uh, basically where the wing incidents would be a uh, little positive incidents. And I went on ahead and I'm just going to put the horizontal stabilizer at just about full bubble level. And I've got the fuselage side trimmed up to where I like it. And I got to come back in and fill in this side when I uh, get to run the push rods and to also center everything up with the wing tube. And uh, yeah. And then we gotta put it in underneath the horizontal stabilizer and then run the little spine piece and the tail is basically done minus the repairs on the tail feathers themselves so uh, quick video sorry for all the mess still out in the garage it's kind of cold but uh yeah so it'll work and the tail's straight. It's not bananaed, which is great. So, woohoo! Hopefully, it'll fly good, and uh, my buddy will be happy. I'm happy. And uh, repairs came out looking nice and smooth. I epoxied that on. So, and I made a new bulkhead. To I can't really see it in there, but it's in there. And that's out of five ply instead of just regular light ply. So that way it'd be a little bit stronger. So more progress. So away we go.
real quick video here. So I've gotten the top sheeting on the uh, left hand side and got it all flared in nice and pretty. You didn't see that. Um, looks pretty good. Just kind of roughed it in on the set some sanding. Then I got to come in here, fix the push rod supports to where they're poking out the appropriate angle. And then once I get that done, I'll brace that side where the, the um, balsa sheeting meets the lower stringer. And uh, after that, we'll put the piece on here, piece of sheeting that closes it up. You see I left a little one eighth of an inch gap. Uh, Got to trim it up a little bit, true it up. And um, that'll give me something to have the sheeting support. So that way it's leaning on the quarter inch balsa or uh, no, I think it's, yeah, it was either a quarter or three eighths. Not really sure. Um, it looks to be a quarter inch uh, balsa stick underneath. And uh, just like I did the other side. <clears throat> and then uh, come in here on the back side where there's some little bit of glue gaps. And uh, yeah, we'll get her closed up. And then uh, I've got to rebuild one tail feathers kind of jank. Oh, I'm going to re rebuild it. And then literally for the rudder, I have to rebuild and create a new rudder using the outline that they my buddy tried to mimic um the other tail would not work because it apparently is bigger if i haven't already covered that that's why i'm having to rebuild everything and i still have three days to get it done while i'm working <laughs> um and i do a little bit for about an hour and a half before uh i wake my wife up and send her and the kid on their way and I go to bed for the day. So, um, yeehaw. So, uh, and then I gotta clean up my mess. I need to really clean my garage up so I can pull my car in. It's getting cold outside. So, yeah. Anyhow, uh, yeah, that's where we're at. Quick little video here. Um, this is what I was talking about, how you uh, use the uh, rulers and stuff, straight edges to fill in the pieces that are required. I already measured from the tail post down on the sheeting and then got my edge for the uh, piece that was already on the fuselage side that I spliced in. I got clamps holding everything straight and level. And now I'll just draw my line to where I'm gonna cut just the hair outside the line and make it good so been under the weather for the last two days so that's why i'm all snotty sound and everything trust me i feel a lot better than what i did two days ago but uh yeah so we're a little bit behind schedule and my friend's kind of like not going to take the plane until the next flying in but it is what it is so <clears throat> here we go finishing this bird up so in continuation of the previous video now that I have my piece cut out that'll fit in, it's slightly oversized a little bit to kind of be sanded into shape. Always cut outside your line and sand, in, sand. I don't know why I said sanded, but um, sand to where it'll fit perfectly instead of trying to cut exactly on the line and then come out short. Trust me, it comes from making a lot of mistakes and doing it the wrong way. Almost every time I do it that way, it comes out short if you do it where you cut outside the line and sand to the part the fitment is almost perfect if not right on the money so just a little quick modeler tip um, that'll help anytime you're building or rebuilding or somewhere there in between as you can see my piece perfectly fits in there minus this little part um, right here on the tail so I drew a little witness mark to notice right where it starts to kind of bulge out. In fact, I'm a little bit inside of where it bulge, starts kind of bulging out when you push it in all the way from the top. So drew me a line from there to about where it overlaps in there. 
And I'm gonna sand that real quick and it's gonna fit in there nice and buttery smooth. And then once it gets glued in, time to sand everything and uh, yeah, uh, glue it in. That's going, and then once I do that, it's uh, on, on to covering the, uh, the fuselage and then uh, we'll rebuild the tail feathers, which is gonna go quick. And we'll be back on track on the Piper Cub rebuild instead of the tail swap because tail feathers were too big. So anyhow. Okay, I got a quick modeling tip. Some people may have known this all their lives and some people don't. But if you have a hard to reach area, like what I'm trying to do inside here with the brace that supports the nye rod, uh, because I basically forgot to put them in there ahead of time. As you can see, I overcut my slot by uh, oh, quite a bit. Um, so to keep it from popping back in, I gotta put some braces in there. So what you can do is take either a flathead screwdriver like this, or even the tip of an X-Acto knife blade, if you need to use thin CA or even um, get into a smaller area with a needle point. Uh, and you take your glue, this is a medium, and I don't have a fancy rig here, obviously, but you put the glue on there, and it's gonna try to run. But without flicking it everywhere like I just did, you take it and then you can put it in there and it'll slide right off the tip of the screwdriver and into the little bitty corner of the crack where I'm trying to put the glue. So even though it flicked a good bit of it off, I still got over about half of my, my glue drop. So, and you could usually do this about two or three times before the glue will start doing, but Sometimes uh, doing a little bit of time, we get it, and then I'm just gonna rotate the screwdriver over and let it drop. And then eventually it'll seep right in there. So it's going in, onto, into that piece. You can kind of see it. I'm building up a little fillet. You see a little shadow in there. Let's see if I can zoom up. There we go. So I got a little fillet going on in there. And same thing up way in here so handy little trick <clears throat> uh, especially if you're rebuilding an airplane at a fly in and you're trying to get in a small area and you, you have a very limited amount of glue uh, you know especially if you're prone to like losing landing gear and stuff like that uh, it's a good way to tack glue uh, your wing ribs back in place also so yeah. hope it helps All right, so I'm starting on the uh, horizontal stabilizer, the repair on it. And as you can see, I got some fine cracking here. That's probably been a previous repair because um, this wasn't R if they got stripped down and recovered. <clears throat> so I put a little R right there because I'm gonna put a reinforcement piece in here. Um, the main part of the rear spar has been chewed up when the uh, tail brace wires got pulled through plus there's a hinge there and some other fun and then this hinge is also broke out it's very flexible so i drew where the cracks were um so what i've done is i've transferred not only the um lower part of the tail piece plus i gotta trim some off i'll continue that line straighten out um but I've transferred the notches where they've notched it at the factory, just like in the leading edge. And uh, I'm just going to put a whole new piece on the back. And I'm going to cut in a, at an angle and try to get as much, uh, much meat for the new piece in there as I can. Make it a good, strong glue joint. Um, and I, I usually write like little small notes to like glue here, cut there. Um, so you don't accidentally do the wrong end. Um, it happens. Um, 
trick to get these dents out is soak them in uh, hot water or even denatured alcohol will do it as well. But usually hot water works great. Um, or put water on there and then uh, from like a washcloth and then actually run your monocoat iron over it. Um, the steam will really pull most of those dents out. So um, I'll do that. I'll always uh, clean the fuselage signs up, which as you can see here, they're done. They're scabbed over and everything. And they're, uh, and this side looks, came out a lot nicer, but you know, it happens when you do it twice. <laughs> One side always looks better. Um, so once I get this piece cut out and whatnot spliced in, I'm gonna call it a night. And uh, yeah, then we'll be on to the uh, tail feathers, which, eesh, they're pretty rough. Um, and then I got to completely build a rudder from nothing. So um, got a, another quick trip to Hobby Lobby, get me some balsa wood re reinforcement pieces and resupply. And uh, as you see, I went on ahead and cut the fuselage covering back to the next nearest bulkhead. I'm going to leave a little bit of overlap, see if I can hide my seam. I doubt it. Um, but like my buddy said, hey, it looks great. Um, doing good progress. Can't wait to fly it. And don't forget, it's still my uh, beer drinking cub. So you know, drink a beer and we'll sit in a lawn chair and shoot touch and go. So, um, and it wasn't a gaggle. That's why I got rear-ended by a Fokker uh, DR7 or something like that. So, yeah. Anywho, that's where we're at right now. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. All right, so I, uh, like in the previous video, I've cut my little notches, kind of roughed in that, drew my straight line across and everything, even did my little angle cut. And so I did my, used my Zona saw, hand saw, and cut that. Use the exacto knife, just cut it off of that, and right there. And so we're gonna do away with that. Then you gotta, come in here and clean that up i'll clean the ends of these little sticks up if they break off that's fine because they're common size and i already have a piece ready to go just in case but that is going to be so much easier and simpler to get in blend in you see right there my nice my nice shoes um and everything coat hanger is actually for a japanese zero don't ask um it's going to be the guns. Spoiler alert. Um, so uh, my son was out here just a little bit ago. Um, kind of messing with me a little bit. Uh, but yeah, so that's going to look really nice. Already marked the estimated hinge locations for the two mo uh, major uh, hinge points. And I'll uh, cut new slots. Um, this side only had one bad spot and I'm going to do a, uh, a, uh, thin CA repair on that. And then I'll put a, uh, splice in there, uh, to kind of reinforce the glue joint a little bit. And then that was from the factory. So that looks fun. Um, but, uh, yeah, so I think that'll be okay. That's going to have a hinge in there. So when I have my little piece in there, I'll, uh, well, I'm going to actually cut in make a slot and glue in a piece of popsicle stick because um, it just needs to be a little bit stronger than what was already there this being like medium density balsa wood it'll be more than strong enough um, plus I got to kind of get it to where I can redo the slot for the, the hinge to go back in there but uh, yeah this this took me literally longer to draw out and that, that only took like about eight to ten minutes and then use the uh, good old scroll saw there and man that is the best hobby tool you can buy yourself at, Har at harbor freight wouldn't use it for anything commercial grade but it definitely works good at ripping some balsa wood when you when you need to do stringers and laundrons and cutting little notches and trailing edge pieces and stuff like that so yeah it's a lifesaver and a time saver unlike my videos so hopefully this will do y'all some good um so yeah Get that glued up, and then I'm going to bed.
already. It's been a while, <clears throat> but we're back here in the workshop. Thanks to Santa Claus, I got a new heater. And uh, it's all of balls cold outside of like 28 or 30 degrees. And uh, yeah, so got some glue and whatnot from the old Hobby Lobby. Their little extreme power, $4.99. Um, and they uh, also carry BSI activator. I don't know why they don't carry their CA, I guess because this is their own brand from Hobby Lobby. They also have their own kicker as well, which I thought was... I don't really prefer it. I prefer the BSI kicker. Um, I've always preferred BSI or even, you know, Zap, but BSI has never let me down. Uh, but yeah, so back to point. Um, got the elevators redone did. And uh, I was able to save most of it and not have to make a whole lot. I did make a new, uh, new rib, but uh, I got a hard hardwood in there as a you know real dense grain balsa, and then I added a piece as you saw in the pictures uh, of soft grain balsa on the leading edge because I still got to cut my hinges in there, and it'll be way plenty strong. So now there's not going to be any warps, and got rid of all the broken and janky crap. This is like literally <laughs> the only things I did not reuse right here. So, you know, Hobby Lobby does pretty good on on their balsa prices when they do have it. Um, I think so far in total, I've got like maybe $25 into the rebuild. Um, so, still got $75 profit I'm working with. My buddy said uh, he's going to pay me 100 bucks to do it. So... And I'm probably got got two hours in basically removing the old parts and making new matching elevators. So, and got rid of all the jankiness. And you know, the hardest, the, the most satisfying part is when you push the old ribs into the new slots, minus that one, and they fit perfectly. It's very satisfying. Um, but yeah, so we're getting closer. Uh, I got to build the rudder. And uh, remember, kids, don't sniff the balsa dust. It's not cocaine. But it does smell pretty damn good. Alrighty, quick update here. Working on the Cub, listening to the podcast. And... What I've done is I've cut some popsicle sticks and glued them in there as spacer blocks to give me my hinge gap on both the trailing edge and the counterbalance. And I've started rebuilding the rudder. I've got my length right. And I, uh, what I'm going to do next is right in here. You can very, very faintly see that's the piece that they use on the trailing edge. So I'm going to cut it off. Add this piece in there like so, and then fill in the curve down here in the corner, and that'll give me the bottom part of the round part, <coughs> and be like this Balsa USA rudder, which is bigger by like 10-15%. Uh, this goes on my dad's cub over in the corner, uh, so can't use that, but... Then we'll build the rudder back up like it was. And, uh, yeah. And after that, we're head on to hinging and covering. Woohoo! Sorry, guys. Totally lied. Just couldn't happen. But, however, the saga of the cub of a crash tail or crash tail cub or ruining your friend. I don't, I don't know. Anyhow, cub tail's almost done. All we have left is hinging. And uh, the reason why I couldn't use the tail is because it's too big. Um, I have another Ball CSA quarter scale cub um, that matches that tail I just threw down on the ground. Um, but 
as you can see, there's minor differences in the old uh, rudder there. Let me get it in the camera better. Um, about a quarter of an inch smaller on the original Hangar 9 quarter scale cub. Um, and uh, it's supposed to be a hundred inch. It was like red and white or something like that, cream and white. Um, but however, I mean, it's pretty darn close. The uh, good thing is we uh, basically just took some good old cardboard, poster board, or in my case, uh, coat case from a 12 pack, and uh, drew out the green rudder onto the paper and uh, kind of matched it up the best I could, kind of subtracted a little bit here and there, used the P51 rudder substitute from the uh, late night beer rebuilding session that they did. And uh, we arrived with a tail section that matches pretty darn close to what was probably originally there. Uh, we rebuilt the elevators with uh, spliced in new leading edges, uh, spli repaired the trailing edges with some splices. And then of course, you know, we know did the fuselage. We got new longerons, new fuselage sides, um, added in broke all the broken pieces and uh, cut away and spliced in everything new that, that needed to be new and stronger. So um, everything matched pretty darn close. Uh, hopefully the incidence is right on, should be slightly, you know, a little bit down, uh, trailing edge down. Um, and uh, yeah, so can't wait to throw the covering on and uh, cut the hinges. Rock and roll. Um, get this airplane out of the shop and get on to something else. I uh, hope y'all enjoyed the session. It's been a pleasure building with y'all. And uh, yeah, see you next project. So it's been a good minute since I've covered a rudder or anything in a while. And uh, I can say that, I guess, I don't know if this is actually a cover right brand. It's kind of old, um, but it was what my buddy gave me. Um, it has the clear backing like it was by cover right. Um, but I've only used cover right once. Um, and I can say that, man, I mean, it, it took me a minute to get used to covering different than using monocoat. And uh, I should have got some before pictures and whatnot, but I just got, I literally just finished doing the, uh, one of the elevator halves here. And I mean, it stretches out really well. I was able to stretch, stretch it all the way around the uh, curve and over the leading edge on one side. And you, know, you, you always want at least about a quarter of an inch overlap. Um, to the best of your ability and like uh man i got the uh iron here set it a little bit a click past three and uh i mean it goes on nice and smooth if you use a little bit lower temperature on my particular iron it the the covering just kind of seems to float and not stick so i had to go up a little bit that and it's like literally 30 degrees outside um you know, I got my little artificial sun going over there. But um, providing warmth to the back of my neck and my legs and everything. But, uh, yeah. So, I don't know. Um, I can honestly say that this cover right, or whatever this particular brand of covering is, stretches probably better around corners and fillets and stuff, just like doing a regular aircraft fabric. Um but however, it really stretches when you start trying to go around a corner and like that's that right there. That's that's actually me just pulling the piece, pulling, you know, had a good pigtail on it, maybe about probably about that long and just pulling it over and was able to get it to I mean, make a nice crisp corner without notching it and whatnot. Um, the one spot I did have to notch it was on this tip because the lines, you know, uh, intersect if you drew the lines out. So I cut it and whatnot. Yeah, so. Here we go. 
Gonna finish this bird up. Just kind of a quick video here. So what I've done is I've already cut my piece oversized. The other side's already done. <coughs> and I'm using some little spring-loaded clamps that I got from like the dollar store or uh, a little small hardware store that's local. Um, they're very lightweight tension. Um, and it just kind of holds the covering so it's not moving on me. And I'll pull a little tension and I'm gonna start applying some heat. I've got it on where it's just enough to stick it down and it not move when I move the iron. Uh, this fabric is actually where it wants to kind of float. Um, so I'm going to pull most of the wrinkles out and I'm going to start in between the clamps and work my way around the perimeter before I shrink in the middle. Also, another trick to know is that fabric can't really see very well, but there's actually a grain to it. And um, I've got real lucky on the rudder. It's kind of a 45 degree grain. Um, but this one I have going straight, since this is the elevator, I have um, actually going uh, perpendicular with the leading edge and trailing edge and whatnot. So um, just kind of a thing if you're doing a fabric covered airplane versus like a monocoat or ultra coat, uh, they don't have a grain to them. So they, they shrink evenly. But I noticed the fabric, it does kind of try to warp a little bit if you pull too much tension in one direction. So just a little side note. And... Uh, I'll try to do one as I'm going. Okay, so what I've done here is I've gone, if you look carefully, the camera might not show it, there's some spots where the iron changes the color. It does this even with the uh, plastic coverings of your favorite brand um and you can see it's still got a little wrinkles in here but we mainly focus on the perimeter and as i've been going i've been using the clamps and also using with the table like when i was doing this portion right here put it up against the table pull and then i put the iron right on it um let's see if i can do this with one hand probably not but you can imagine, basically, I'd be stretching it and then tapping the iron real gently on the edge. Um, and you just work your way around. And you know, I got plenty of room to pull. If you do get in a spot like here or in the corner where you can't do it, some real cheap, smooth jaw pliers come real good handy because then you can grab this sucker and pull some tension and put some heat on it and not burn your hand. Needle nose pliers work really good in that instance as well. And, um, or some, sometimes you can use pliers that kind of have like little pinching looking jaws. Um, if you buy one of these little sets of these little pliers, you can even get them from Hobby Lobby through like bead making. Uh, they're perfect. Uh, they do make a covering tool um, that like you can grab and it's got like a flat piece and you tug it. Uh, but these can get kind of close to the surface because they're small. But yeah, so I'm just gonna keep going around, tightening that up, and uh, yeah, we'll get done with it. So here's the airplane completed. Um, this was taken August of 2023. We just had a Warbird event, and my buddy's put about 100 flights on it since then, or since the uh, time I turned it over to him. And uh, as you see, he got the decals looking great. Um, we put some pinking tape to cut out the covering to make it look like a scale re repair job. And it flies amazing. I got to get a little pull on it and fly it around a little bit more, shoot more touch and goes. And it flies tail high just like a cub should. And when you throttle back, it, it dives down slightly. When you throttle up, it barely climbs. It's very neutral flying and flew great. However, the next day after I took this picture, he uh, was flying around having a great time and ran out of gas and busted the firewall off. 
So this completes the saga of the 100 inch Hangar 9 Cub. Hope you enjoyed it. It's been awesome.